Hello and welcome to this hack tutorial about masking fluid. I don't know about you, but masking fluid has been in the past an absolute nightmare for me. And with the help of the community on Instagram, I was able to get over this. And I'm here to share some of those tips with you today. My first tip is about gummy brushes. And this one comes from at kintha.draws. You have saved so many of my brushes from the bin and I cannot thank you enough. I have to share this hack with everyone. Had a brush that looks like this? Yeah, me too. I mean, there's no going back from it. RIP little guy. But this is a brush that isn't messed up. And I'm gonna show you how to protect those little bristles while you paint with masking fluid. So before you start painting, get yourself a brush that you don't want to get ruined. Take some washing up liquid, move it around in the washing up liquid to coat all of the bristles. Wipe off any excess, rinse in clean water, and dab it off with some paper towel. Use your masking fluid as you normally would, and then once you're done, rinse off into the third glass. Give it a wipe again, and look, a brush with no bits of anything in it. So, for Shrek's lawyer, Bork.Borks, Issa Lama Yes, and Dopamine Does Art, who all asked for advice on this subject, I hope that this helps you in the future. Now I'm going to use this technique and show you the brush at the end of it again to prove that it does work, not just by dipping it in and washing it off, while I apply masking fluid to paper to explore different ways of peeling it off. This hack is so, so good. Uh, I got some bubbles in it. Don't judge me. So another one of my followers, Clody underscore Savoir, asked me how to remove masking fluid. So I'm gonna go through some pretty well-known techniques, but also I found this cool product on Amazon the other day. I was looking for masking fluid products for this video and it looked really weird, so I thought, let's give it a go. First tip is allow everything to dry. People ask me all the time how you stop it from ripping paper. Now sometimes cheap paper is the reason, but often it's because the paper is still slightly damp when people try to remove the masking fluid from it. So if you're not sure, get a hairdryer on it for a couple of minutes or one of those craft heat guns. So we're gonna test a couple of ways that we can remove the masking fluid from the paper. First up, a soft eraser. This is my absolute go-to. It's what I've used since I started watercolour painting, basically. It's kind to the paper and it lifts up the masking fluid nice and gently. Okay, so just gently move your soft eraser over the paper, like so, and it will eventually pick up all of the masking fluid. So that method's nice and clean. Second method is with a pair of tweezers. I don't like the sound of this because I think it's going to scratch the paper. I don't like this at all. No way! How can people recommend this method? It's... I suppose the point is to pick it up and... <laughs> no! No! Okay, I got a bit of... a bit of the E. No. No. Yeah. No. Third method is my finger. I don't like this method because it will leave oily marks on the paper and if you want to paint on any areas after you've removed the masking fluid, then you might run the risk of the watercolour not adhering to the paper because you've left a layer of oil on it. But it's effective, uh, as you can see right there. I guess it's the fingerprints, eh? I don't know. Yes, I had holes in the masking fluid. Now the fourth tool is this product called Mask Away that I've never seen before, but came up as a recommended item on Amazon when I was buying some stuff recently. And it's by the SAA. Uh, apparently it's a very simple yet effective tool to add to your box of goodies. It erases masking fluid quickly and cleanly from the surface and it's endorsed by a professional artist called Alison Seaboard. So Alison, let's see if this works. 
Ooh. It's like, um, like a bar of soap. It's really weird. It's like a resiny kind of thing. Oh, I know what it's like. It's like, um, flooring that you get in, uh, like AstroTurf. It's, it's like AstroTurf. This is really weird. Let's see how this works. <gasps> oh my God, guys, do you hear that? It is literally gripping the masking fluid. This is, um, what? This is amazing. I can't believe this. How? No more soft eraser for me, I'm telling you. This thing's amazing. I mean, ignoring the fact that I've got holes in my masking fluid. Look! Uh, I am never using a soft eraser again. This is like my product of the year, and we're three days into 2020. Okay, now for a quick fire round of questions. A few weeks ago, I put a story out to my Instagram followers and asked them for their burning questions about masking fluid. And I'm gonna take a couple of minutes just to answer those. So first up is underscore self-aware potato. I love that handle. You asked, does it affect the penciling at all? The short answer is yes, it does. So masking fluid, when you remove it from paper, takes some of the fibres with it and it will naturally do so with the graphite as well. So the solution to that is you could use a harder pencil to try and get that to stay on the paper. Just experiment with it on a swatch of your watercolour paper before you go into the full artwork because nothing hurts more than finishing a painting and then realising that you could have done something differently. Colourful.Janine asks, when it's dried and I've coloured over it and I want to peel it off, sometimes the paper rips. Why? Two answers. Your masking fluid isn't dry yet or you've applied it too thickly. So that's answer 1.5. Allow it to dry completely before you remove it from the paper. Completely. And if you're not sure, get a hairdryer on it. The second thing is that the watercolour paper around it that you actually painted on is still damp as well. Um, so same rule applies. Make sure that it's bone dry before you remove the masking fluid. Lena Lee underscore Picaflor asks, how long a bottle of masking fluid lasts for? Now, this question's a little bit like how long is a piece of string? I've had my bottle since March 2019, so just over nine months, and it's lasted me really, really long. I mean, this thing's still probably about two thirds full, but then I use it for small details that I want to protect from paint. I don't use it to do big swathes of a painting in general, but see how you go with one of these. Like I said, this has probably lasted me about nine months and is still pretty much full. Marink.art, whose name is Marley Inksetter. Like, can we swap? Marley asks, what if you mess up? Like, too big a blob of it or way outside your line, you know? Yeah, I do know. Um, the answer is not great. Start again. Like I said before, masking fluid takes off some of the surface of the paper. So if you were to remove it and start again, when you paint over that, you're gonna get a shadow because the top surface of the paper has been removed. The pigment and the water are gonna get absorbed quicker into that part of the paper. It basically will become really messy. Atomic.Karis asks how they should decide where to apply the masking fluid. It really depends on the painting that you're doing. Like I said before, I only use it for small details. Um, but if you're doing something a bit more complicated, then it's definitely worth getting a scrap bit of watercolour paper and create a little thumbnail painting so that you can practice where the masking fluid's gonna go. I mean, it should only take you a couple of minutes, really. Just a very quick swatch painting in a way. And then that will help you decide how you want to do the bigger piece. But just remember that the first painting normally doesn't go the way you planned. And every single failure is a lesson learned and it means that we'll do better the next time. So just experiment loads with it and see how you get on. And lastly, Roderick underscore Wolf has blue masking fluid and it's leaving a stain on their paper. Now that is because there's something in that masking fluid to make it blue, but being able to see what you're doing, where you're putting that masking fluid is obviously super helpful. With a colourless masking fluid like I've been using today, it's very difficult to see where you've painted, unless you have a strategically placed lamp to kind of show you where the shine is on the top of the masking fluid. So that's the trade-off. See what you're doing, don't see what you're doing. No mark, blue mark. Thank you guys so much for watching. A big shout out to all of the people that helped me make this video by sending in their questions and to Kintha.Draws for her amazing, amazing tip 
about protecting brushes from the devil that is masking fluid. If you have any feedback or you want any clarification about any of the techniques used in this video, please drop me a comment down below. And as always, if you have any requests for any content for the future, also drop me a comment down below. See you guys next time and get experimenting.